Itaba we fall on the long boy. We have a full spirit, glory spirit. <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Are you still here? That was a beautiful one. Help me celebrate them. The peculiar vessels resurrected alongside with Christ Jesus. May this resurrection remain permanent. Because Jesus came out from the dead to die no more. Praise God. Please help me celebrate them. There's a reason we are celebrating, celebrating them. Lira, Lira. Glory to God. Thank you so much. We, are, we, we were blessed by that. Praise the Lord. I have a friend in the house, very good friend of mine. He is an apostle, but um, he likes to be humble. Praise the Lord. Apostle Johnny Agbaje. Can we celebrate him? Himself and his wife are my very, very good friends. He came to fellowship with us this morning. Is somebody blessed? Are you sure you are blessed? Okay, praise the Lord. So what does Easter imply? What's the implication of Easter? Let's see, just five things, several things that the dying going to the cross, that's, notice what I said, they going to the cross. So the redemption work started from when he, he, he from the day he was born, Uche was trying to, he said something during the first service that when we were small, they used to ask us to, um, is it this, Distinguish or tell which one is more powerful, the dying or the birth of the Lord Jesus. He said, now that he's of age, he knows that all, both of them have their implications. Praise the Lord. Both of them are equally powerful. If he wasn't born, he wouldn't have died. If he was born and he didn't die, he would have, his coming would have been useless. Are you still here? So the redemption work of Christ started from long before he went to the cross. Are you still here? It started from long before he went to the cross. It started from long before he got to Gethsemane. But the thing really kicked off while he was in Gethsemane. And he was praying and he was doing all that. The Bible says he bled, um, his skins, his sweat were as great drops of blood falling to the ground. Glory to God. I was reading that one day and the Holy Spirit took my mind to, to a village setting like this. If in this setting they wanted to, um, you know, um, they wanted to pray to their gods, they would take wine. Is that not correct? And then they are going to be putting it on the ground. And then they are going to be appeasing their gods. Is that not correct? When the blood of Jesus was dropping on the ground, it was curing the ground for them that are in Christ. Because Bible says in the book of Genesis, and God cursed the ground for man's sake. Are you still here? So that's what he first did. So even before he got to the cross, he cured the ground for your sake. So while the ground is bringing out tons and tissues for others, the ground has been commanded and has been mandated to bring forth fruit for you. Is somebody still here? And then he was on his way to the cross. He, he did so many things. They, 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 they beat him and they spat on him. They pulled his beards, all that. They put it to shame. That's the summary. So he bore shame so that you will bear honor. Are you still here? He bore shame so that you will come into honor. Let me tell your neighbor, no more shame for you. So if every time you come to a crossroad, it looks like shame is imminent, you must look up to the cross. I love those songs. I, they, they are the mainstay of my, of my relationship with God. Those three songs, they're about that we sang. He, he said, my faith looks up to him, the Lamb of Calvary. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. He said, I need no other plea. I don't need any other, any other argument. I don't need any other counsel to stand up for me. I don't need to say no, nothing. Jesus said it all. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Praise God. So he bore him. But quickly, let's just see some five things I put here. Number one implication of Easter, of his dying on the cross of Calvary, is that he settled the sin issue. Jesus defeated sin on your behalf. Glory to God. I said glory to God. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9, Bible refers to him as the author, the author of eternal salvation. 
It saved you from sin. Somebody say, I'm saved from sin. Say it loud. Say it loud. He saved it. So he's the author of eternal salvation to those who are in him. Second Corinthians 5.21. Who are in him and who remain in him. Second Corinthians 5.21. He, he made him for he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us. Somebody say amen. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. In where? In him. So as long as we remain in him, is our righteousness. Glory to God. Now remaining in him is deeper than just coming to church. Remaining in him is deeper uh, 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 than just knowing a, a couple of scriptures or being able to speak in tongues. Glory to God. I said glory to God. How do you know that you are in him? First John chapter 3 verse 2 and 6 and then first John chapter 3 verse 6. 2 6 first. Somebody say I am in him. Say it again. I am in Christ Jesus. First John chapter 2 verse 6. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk as he walked. So I, I am the right now again in Christ, but you are not walking as he is walking. Your in himness as query. Are you still here? It has query. It was made sin for us. Who knew no sin? So that we can become the righteousness as long as we are in him. You are in this room now. After a couple of hours now, you can decide to be out of this room. Are you still here? So somebody can be in Christ and step out of Christ. Somebody still here. True. He's the author of eternal salvation. So long as we remain in him. First John chapter 3 verse 6. You can't be here now. And then two days later you are in your office somewhere. In Makoko or somewhere. And then they say where you are. You, where are you? You say I'm in, in Estonia in 38. Is that correct? It's not correct. It's not. It's not. Whoever abides in him does not what? Does not make a practice of sinning. Does not patronize sinning. That's how we know we are in him. Are you still here? Are you still here? Romans chapter 6 verse 18. The Bible says we are servants of righteousness. Romans chapter 6 verse 18. And having been set free from sin. Somebody say I'm set free from sin. You became slaves. It's not even servants. Slave. Slave is deeper than servant. A slave does not have any uh, option but to do what he is commanded and told to do. Are you still here? Me and you are slaves of right living. We are slaves of right standing. We are slaves of right thinking. We are slaves of right going. Praise the Lord. So what did Jesus come to do? What does sin? What is the gravity of Easter? He came to defeat sin. So somebody is living a life where sin is still a big issue. You are falling today, you are rising tomorrow, you, you stand one day, you fall seven days. Uh, um, we are going to see it. It's important you allow this Easter to make you angry. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Somebody said I have dominion over sin. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. 6 verse 14. Bible says we have dominion over sin. For sin shall not have dominion over you. Okay, so, so if it, sin will not have dominion over you, then you should do what? Have dominion over sin. For you are not under the law, but under grace. 
the reason, the very reason why you should dominate sin, put it where it belongs, under your feet, is because of the grace that we have been talking about. Am I communicating? It's not that because of grace, then sin that Jesus came to settle is now coming back to rubbish us. Glory to God. I said glory to God. First Peter 2 verse 24. He bore our sins on his body on the tree that we having died to sins. Somebody say I'm dead to sins. Might live for righteousness. Oh King James say unto righteousness i live unto righteousness i live unto because of easter praise the lord i said praise the lord i was once a sinner jesus died took care of the same problem therefore i am no longer sins i am no longer a patronizer of sins glory to god i said glory to god we before now if i saw a woman i couldn't I, I couldn't keep my pants off glory to god but now because of easter praise god when i see a sister i i see a woman i see her as a sister with all purity that's the implication of easter am i communicating several churches everywhere they are talking about it um, about what christ did today now many places they will not address this one but this is the starting point are you still here are you still here are you still here it is the starting point it's the starting point it's the starting point it is the starting point behold the lamb of god who removed not the poverty of the world not the sickness of the world but the sins of the world his name shall be called jesus for he shall save his people not from poverty are you still here not from poverty, not from uh, 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 from ignorance, from sins. Let me tell your neighbor, you need to get angry. You need to get angry. We must not allow the things that are saying out there to confuse us. We need to put sin where it belongs. That is what will make God proudest about us. Is somebody still here? Glory to God. I forgot to tell you happy Easter. Somebody say, help me extend happy Easter to your neighbor. All right. What else did Jesus do? What else does Easter imply? Jesus bore our pains and our sicknesses and our diseases. He bore it. He bore it. That first with our 2 verse 24. That we have been dead to sin. Should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. Ye, oh, you, I was telling Bishop Song recently that I, I've missed teaching. It is already done. I need to go back to it. Praise God. I said praise the Lord. Uh, I, I, it is. I mean, I mean, so if you have been here for long enough, God gave us a very simple approach to faith. Very extremely simple. Very simple, and it's working like fire. Praise God. Since I started understanding faith from that, from that angle, no more struggling. You are not praying to be healed. You are already healed. You are not fighting to prosper. You are already prospered. Am I communicating? Uh, just like you are already delivered from sin, you are already delivered from poverty, you are already delivered from pain, from sickness, from infirmity, from shame. Praise the Lord. I said, praise God. I'm believing God. One of these days, we'll go back to one or two months of faith teaching again. Okay, so he bore our pains and our sicknesses and our diseases. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 4. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 4 to 7. Let's all read it together. Isaiah 55, sorry, 53. Sorry, 53, verse 4 to 7. 53. One, two, go. Read it, read it as if it, this is Easter morning, surely. Notice, did he say he will bear? He has what? Okay, continue. And what? But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. 
and with his stripes we are healed. First Peter says, with his stripes we were healed. Somebody say, I'm healed. Say it again, I'm healed. So you are carrying a sickness or the other on your body. You are not believing God for healing. Okay, let me put it this way. You are not looking to be healed. You are already healed. Am I communicating? Uh, what you are doing, faithing, is that you are implement. You are trying to implement who you already are by status, statutorily. You are already healed. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. You are, uh, you are in a position of shame now. People laugh at you when they see you. Statutorily, you are already honored. As you begin to release your faith, honor, shame will change to honor. Is somebody following me? Pain will change to gain. Uh, crying will change to laughter. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Sorrow will give way to joy. I prophesy in your life. Sorrow gives way to joy. Pain gives way to gain. Sickness gives way to healing and health and strength. In the name of Jesus. He said the chastisement of our peace was upon him. You are here this morning and you lack peace. You don't know peace. Whether psychologically, emotionally, or physically, or spiritually. You are statutorily, you have been established in peace. So as you begin to speak it and begin to believe like that. Speak, peace returns to your family. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus bore your shame. So you are covered with honor. He was oppressed on your behalf. Okay, let, let's quickly read that place. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're reading. I, I, okay, all we continue like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his way. And the Lord has what? He was oppressed. Hold on. Hold on. So he was oppressed. What's the opposite of oppression? Eh? Deliverance, liberation. So, okay, maybe if you wanted to title this, you can title it The Great Exchange. Every word that you see here that the Bible describes Jesus to have gone through, the opposite is your portion. Not will be your portion, is already your portion. So you're having bad dreams, you, are all, you keep being oppressed in your sleep or wherever. One, you can sense oppression around you. You are deliberated. Who the devil is trying to deceive that you are, you are still bound, bounded. Am I communicating? So you just begin to, you need to begin to believe it and to speak it. I am already set free. He that the son has set free is free in. So he was oppressed. Therefore you and I were delivered. Glory to God. You've been delivered. I said you've been delivered. I said you've been delivered. Somebody is here. You are running from pillar to post looking for deliverance. Looking for deliverance. You are already delivered. <laughs> you are already delivered. You are already delivered. Somebody said I'm already delivered. You are already delivered. Praise God. Yet he opened not his mouth. Do you know the reason he didn't open his mouth? Not because he couldn't speak English. He wanted to take it in so that he would bear it for you. Praise God. He is brought and as a sheep before as share as he's dumb. So he opened not his mouth. Praise God. Okay, number three. What's the implication of Easter? Jesus paid for our welfare. Welfare, peace, prosperity, protection, preservation. Second Corinthians 8 verse 9. When he died, he took your place in poverty so that you could take his place in wealth. Praise God. I said praise the Lord. Okay, can we read it one to go? No, say I know, say I know. No, don't say for you know, say I know. Yet for, yet for, he became what? So that I, through his poverty, message Bible. I love this place in message Bible. Glory to God. 
I said, glory to God. Can we read it? One to go. I am familiar with the generosity of my master, Jesus Christ. Rich as it was, he gave it all away for me in one. <laughs> is there any person rich in this house? Who is the rich person? Who is the rich man? Can I? Somebody said, but I'm just a teenager. They still give me school fees or they still give me transport fees to, to school. You are rich. Are you still here? Are you still here? You are, you are, you are, you are. As we close, we will talk, talk about how to appropriate this thing. You just need to walk in it. Glory to God. So he paid for our welfare. Praise God. He paid for your peace. Jesus paid for your peace. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. Glory to God. I feel strongly about that. One family lacking peace here. You need to go home and begin to declare the chastisement of my peace was upon him. The chastisement of our peace in this family was upon him. Praise the Lord. Bible says he made peace. Colossians chapter 1 verse 20. Colossians chapter 1 verse 20. Not only that. No. Go back to King James. Thank you Lord Jesus. Somebody say thank you Jesus. And by him to reconcile all things to himself. By him, whether on, on, on things, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Having made peace. Through what? Having made peace. That word peace is from one tongue twisting a Greek word. Irenopopia. And it means a state of natural tranquility. Exemption from rage and havoc of war. Praise the Lord. You have been exempted from the rage of havoc and the havoc of war. You have been exempted from the rage and the havoc of, of, of destruction. That's why in Stone Church, you, all, you keep hearing these testimonies. Uh, something nearly happened, but it didn't happen. Nearly can never kill a bird. In Stone Church, we have been delivered from calamity. Calamity is not permitted to happen to any of us or any member of our families. Any person who is truly associated with us. Any person who is truly on our side. Calamity is far from them. Praise the Lord. Because he made peace for us. So no matter how strong, the, how advanced the economy is, how hot the weather is, how advanced the climate is, you and I got peace. Glory to God. I said glory to God. The peace word in the, in the Hebrew is from the word shalom. And it means nothing missing, nothing broken. Praise the Lord. In Job chapter 5, it says you shall go to your tabernacle and you shall find it. You shall return to your tabernacle and you shall find it in peace. Praise God. Uh, uh, so, help me tell your neighbor, cool down. Your siblings are safe anywhere they are. Your children are safe anywhere they are. Even your your, 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 your parents are protected. Listen to me. We, we are not kidnappable in Eston Church. Neither is anyone who is affiliated to us kidnappable. Am I communicating? Oh, yes, yes. No devil can kidnap us. Praise God. No matter how wicked they are becoming, their wickedness cannot touch us. Is somebody still here? Somebody say, God, peace. Is it any wonder when he came? He said, I am the prince. So, but I'm, I've been a Christian all these years. I'm not having peace. Maybe you, you, number one, you need to look at some things. One, look at that first point I talked about. As I sat there, I was just looking at, I was just thinking about it. You know, he, 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 imagine that righteousness for us is a cloak. You remember when that Ebola thing happened? And then people who are uh, health workers who are attending, um, uh, attending to uh, Ebola patients, they will wear one suit like that. Cover everywhere like people who are going to moon. Uh, am I communicating? Imagine that there's a hole somewhere on their mask or somewhere on, on all those places. All the suits they are wearing would have been useless. Righteousness for you and I is like that cloak. Acts of sins, deliberate sins, punch us holes in those things. 
So it destroys our immunity. Glory to God. So somebody needs to go and look at it. How, how, how are you practicing the word of God? In your family, there's no peace. You're always fighting, beating each other. Are you guys practicing the word of God? Praise the Lord. You need to look at it. Because the reason Jesus came is so that you can have peace. And I prophesy peace in your family. That amen is weak. The amen is very weak. The amen is very weak. The fourth thing, uh, fourth thing that he has changed for us, Jesus, is he has changed, he delivered us from death. Somebody said I've been delivered from death. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. For as much as the children are partakers, flesh of, of, partakers of flesh and blood, he partook of the same. That through death, he might destroy him who had, 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 had the power of death. That is the devil. He left us in, uh, so that we are not in doubt who, who the Bible is talking about. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Somebody say I'm delivered from death. Say it again. Now, death um, is a, what's that word now? It's a spectrum. Glory to God. Um, it culminates in eternal death. It's a spectrum. Sickness, disease, physical death, um, 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 afflictions all that but it culminates in eternal that's a spiritual death separation from god jesus delivered you from death glory to god i said glory to god i said glory to god i said glory to jesus so in john chapter 3 verse 15 to 16 john chapter 3 verse 15 to 16 thank you lord that basic scripture that whosoever believes in him should not what but have what? And then verse 16. All of us, we could quote it. For God so that he gave his only, that whosoever believes in him should not what? But that's what anything happens to you now. We look for you. We don't see you. You have already made heaven. Are you still here? Are, are you still here? Are you still here? Praise God. Nothing is reassuring more than that. He defeated death on our behalf. And he gave us eternal life. Praise God. Now. How do you enter into all these things? Galatians 2.20. Mental chief talked about it. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I what? Yet not I, but Christ does what? And the life which I now, no, read along with me, and the life which I now live what? I live by what? In the Son of God. Who did what? But notice where it starts from. Notice where it starts from. I have been what? Crucified. As he was being crucified, I was crucified along with him. Praise the Lord. It is no longer I who lives. Christ lives, he lives his life through me. This life that I'm now living, it is actually Christ who is living his life through me. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. He said I now live in the flesh. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by, the faith, by faith in the Son of God. Praise the Lord. I believe the coming of the Son of God. I believe the workings of the Son of God. I believe the workings on the cross of Calvary. I believe in his instructions. I believe his lifestyle. I just live by faith in him. Praise the Lord. Look at Romans chapter 6 verse 4. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Romans 6 verse 4. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. Let me tell you, neighbor, you have been buried once. What's the look on their face like? Say to another person, they have buried you before. <laughs> That's what I would say. You have been buried, we have been buried with him through baptism into death. 
Praise the Lord. That just as Christ was raised from the dead. Are you glad that Christ was raised from the dead? By the glory of the Father, even so also we should walk in the newness of life. So how do we appropriate all these things? Just walk in the newness of life. Praise the Lord. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in the healing provided. Walk in the prosperity provided. Walk in the victory provided. Walk in the sanctification provided. Praise God. Remember when we talked on holiness? I said I discovered something. Something a bit slight from what they used to taught us from, you know, the um, um, teachers, sorry, from the other, uh, from the more com- conservative uh, members of the bodies of Christ. They told us that you need to walk to become holy. But when, when, when I studied the Bible, I saw that we, don't, we are not called to become holy. We have already been made holy, but we are called to maintain holiness. Hallelujah. Praise God. So walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Walk in it. Even so, also, we should walk in this newness of life. Receive grace to walk in it. Receive grace to walk in it. Walk in the healing. Walk in the prosperity. One of the ways, people of God, if you are in this church, you don't confess. You don't take confession seriously. You have not been listening to me. You, you should create confessions that you are announcing regularly. Again, recently, I, I took up my confessions that I, I did. May 2nd, 2014. Praise the Lord. And I was saying it again, saying it again. Many of those things I started saying five years ago. I'm seeing them now. Praise the Lord. I've not seen some of them. I've not seen many of them, but I've seen many. Praise the Lord. Can you have too many? I don't know. I've seen many. I've not seen many. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I've seen some. I've not seen some. But I keep saying it. And then as I was saying it this time around, God reminded me. When you started saying this, you didn't see these things. So. There were some of these things around you that were not there. If you say it more, these other ones that look like you are just being overambitious, you will see it. How do you walk in the newness? Start saying it, believing it, practicing it, and believing it, and saying it, and practicing it, and believing it, and saying it, and practicing it. Praise the Lord. I said, praise God. Leaving out no aspect of it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 12. Before we, because we must pray now. It said lay hold on eternal life. How do you lay hold? It said fight the good fight of what? Fight the good fight of what? And by so doing do what? Lay hold on what? To which you were also called, and you have done what? The good what? Lay hold on it. I reject poverty. Praise the Lord. I reject. Somebody shout it. I reject it. I reject mediocrity. I reject sickness. I reject disease. I reject unholiness. I reject slavery to sin. I, 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 I reject it. Moko, praise God. One of my friends, some, some of us have seen him come here uh, uh, Sunday from, from over four, 30 years of, of knowing him in Christ's chapel. Praise the Lord. When Dr. Tunde Jada will be teaching that time, the guy is um, some of this, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, like uh, I, I can't, I don't know what they call it, but some of these persons that are a bit mentally retarded. So, you know, when TJ is talking, he will just stand up and then he will, uh, maybe the man says something negative. He said, more yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> Someone said, more yeah, more yeah means I duck it. I, I, I avoid it. I reject it. Glory to God. I must walk in this newness of life. This life, oh, praise God. Look at it. Look at it. First Timothy chapter 6. No, no, no. Um, um, First Timothy chapter 6 verse 17. Oh, glory to God. Christ came to give us the good life. I, I didn't hear your amen. Christ came to give you the good life. 
He came to give you the good life. He came to give you the good life. What is eternal life? Eternal life means life infinite in quantity and quality. Infinite. The, he, 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 he's, he's the good life. The good unending life. Command those who are rich in this world. Praise God. Who are rich in this in who are rich in this present age, not to be haughty, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly. How many things? How many things? How many things? Let me tell your neighbor, I've been given marriage to enjoy. I've been giving children to enjoy. I've been giving fruitfulness to enjoy. I've been giving cars to enjoy. Praise God. Uche, in that my confession, it will get to some points and I'll begin to say, I have cars. I have houses. I have diamonds. I've never seen diamond in my, with my eye, but I, I, I will say it here. I handle one in my, in my hands. Praise the Lord. Or maybe till I own a diamond field. <laughs> Glory to God. Bible says he was rich in cattle. He was rich in silver. He was rich in gold. He was rich in camels. He was rich in horses. He was rich in, in man servants. He was rich in male, female servants. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the good life. Jesus came so you can have the good life. He came so you can enjoy. But to enjoy his own way. What they call enjoyment outside there keeps us from enjoying why Jesus came. Are you still here? Stand up to your feet. Tell somebody happy Easter. By the time you are saying it now, you are saying it with better meaning. Is that not correct? Tell them happy Easter. Welcome to the good life. Say it, say it, say it. Go around and say it. Welcome to the good life. Welcome to the good life. It gives us all things to enjoy. All things to enjoy. He giveth us all things to enjoy. He giveth us all things to enjoy. He giveth us all things to enjoy. Glory to God. I said glory to God. He has given me all things to enjoy. Therefore I will walk in newness of life. I will, as you have received Christ, so walk ye in him. I receive Christ by faith and grace. I walk in him by faith and grace. Praise the Lord. Take, talk, take the hands of your neighbor and let's just pray in tongues this wonderful Easter morning. Take the hands of your neighbor, pray in tongues loud. Thank you, Jesus. Pray in tongues loud. Lagarabosha. Yegalos Shandala Bosa Tarabo Makota Katala Labadagabala Rabo He has given us all things to enjoy. He rests up. Woo! Glory. I can hear you praying in tongues. Go ahead, prophesy in tongues. Jesus came so that I can. Woo, thank you, Lord. He came so that we can have a good life. So that we can have the good life. In Eston Church, we enjoy the good life.
So somebody asked me a question. And I want to pose it to you. I will not necessarily answer it. Go and think about it. Daily, if Jesus came, lived a sinless life, died a sinless death, but he didn't resurrect, what's the implication of that? Can't think about it. Whatever God does, God is a perfect God. So why did Jesus resurrect? You remember he met uh, Mary Magdalene. He said, don't touch me. He said, because I've not been, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way to heaven. I'm, I'm taking the sacrifice. I'm taking it. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. You know, in this traditional African thing, one man they carry it. So Jesus also carried his own. He said, I am headed to heaven to take the blood sacrifice to my God and to your God. To my father and to your father. Praise God. Okay, so why did Jesus ensure that he had to resurrect? So that what he paid for, he will be able to supervise it and see to it that it is implemented. <laughs> Are you still here? Hebrews 7, 25. Wherefore he is able, praise God. I said, praise the Lord. He is able also to save him to the uttermost. Those who come to him, to, to God through him, since he always lives. Oh, King James says, he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So wherever the decisions have been made in the realm of the spirit, his eyes are always there. Hey, 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 wait, wait, wait. I paid for that guy's sponsorship. No! I, I paid for his, his, his healing. I paid for the peace of that family. <laughs> Something is trying to hold you in bondage in, in addition. I paid for his I paid I paid for his release. Glory to God. You cannot you cannot trap him with addiction. He ever live it to make intercession. Oh glory to God. That's why in Timothy, the Bible says he is our advocate. Are your lawyer? Are you here? Is that not all you people? Hey, hey, hey. my learned. No, no. They will just stand up. I, is it I beg to disagree? There's something that you try to say in court. Objection, my lord. No, 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 no. I can't take it. I can't. My learned friend is trying to something, something, something. My my client. No way. Oh, somebody give him a shot. Listen, that's why you cannot fail. The one who paid for your prosperity, he now rose to become your advocate, to become your intercessor, so that your prosperity must happen. of God. That's why I'm, I keep telling us, I'm, it's, it looks like I'm strong on living a holy life. When you don't live a holy life, that is objection, it cannot be strong. Are you still here? It can be. Praying tongues more.
you are defending a client. The client is in the dock. There are things that once people should do in the court and things they should not do. Is that not correct? There are things that the client, is it the accused or whatever, can be doing that will infuriate the judge. But this your client insists on continuing to do those things. Will it affect your case or not? Huh? Yes, it will. It will. We'll receive healing. We'll receive breakthroughs. Somebody shout, I receive healings. I receive breakthroughs. I receive prosperity. I receive honor. I receive deliverance afresh. In the name of Jesus, Christ died for me so that I will be free. I am free indeed. I am free eternally. I am free permanently. In the name of Jesus. In the name. Oh, let's bow. Every eyes closed. This is a very good morning to give one's life to Christ afresh. If you are here, every eyes closed, all heads bow, and you are not born again. Or you know you need to be born again again. Your relationship with God is wobbly. You don't even know whether it's there at all. Where you are, you don't need to come out here. Throw your hands in heaven. We are going to pray with you. Is there anybody? I see a hand there. Is there any other hand? Is there any other? Throw it here in the air. I want to see it. Thank you, Jesus. Two hands. Yeah, two hands, yes. Any other person? Can we sing that song? Some ministers stand with those two and lead them to Christ for me. Can you help us look for the English version of this game? Sing it again, I will explain it. The warfare is over. The siege is over. The Savior has won the victory. It is the songs of joy that we are going to be. That that song is a very hard song. It's not. It's an Easter morning song. Sing it again. to your victory. 
Don't allow anybody or anything to steal your victory. And the starting point, don't forget, is this victory over sin. It's what created it in the first place. You hold on to that. You will see other aspects of victory happen like this. Praise the Lord.